Hey active travelers, welcome to my guide to Curacao, and join me as I explore this wonderful island. Curacao has a modern and well-staffed airport, making your arrival a breeze. The best way to explore the island is to get a rental. You don't need an off-road vehicle, since most roads on the island are paved and in good condition. Driving in Curacao is also very easy, so most drivers should feel comfortable, even in the city. And although there are a couple of bottleneck roads, most places just don't experience too much traffic. Choosing where to stay on the island may depend on what you like to do. If you choose not to rent a car, and simply want to explore Willemstad, then staying in the Pietermai district or anywhere close to the Queen Emma Bridge may be best. If, instead, you primarily want to chill on scenic beaches and get away from the city, then I would recommend staying on the west end of Willemstad, from where you will have quicker access to the west side of the island. And finally, if you want to be more active and do water sports like windsurfing, kitesurfing or surfing, or you want to be super close to a couple of good beaches, then I would stay on the east end of the city in an area called Jan Seal. During our two week stay on the island, we chose to split our stay into two places to be able to explore both sides of the island. However, given that we like to be active and do water sports, most days we just ended up going to the same places regardless of where we stayed. So next time, since the island is small enough that you can explore it all from one place, I will just stay in my favorite place, Inyan Seal. To see the most scenic sights and beaches, you should head out to the west end of the island, past Grotnip, all the way to Playa Grande. Playa Grande itself is not the nicest beach, but it is home to friendly sea turtles. If you are into snorkeling and want to see these graceful creatures underwater, this is the best place on the island to do it. And given that there are frequent turtle viewing tours, and that the tour operators feed the turtles, they are used to people and not afraid to come close to you. And hey, you may even get to see some pelicans on the beach as they patiently wait for their daily feast of fish remains discarded by local fishermen. But beware, this beach can get very busy with all the turtle seeking fans and excursions. If snorkeling or sea turtles are not your thing, bypass the beach and consider taking an hour to explore the western tip of Curacao with its desolate end of the world look where the ocean meets the cliffs and where you can see the Watamula blowhole. The road to get there and back is not paved, so this is one of the few places where you need to drive more carefully. Hey, you may even spot a couple of tiny remote beaches along the way. Swimming in these may be dangerous, but they are beautiful to look at. Tracing your way back from the west end of the island, you can stop at any of the beaches along the way and you won't be disappointed. Each beach we visited was unique and gorgeous. First on the list of these amazing beaches is Grotnip, with crystal clear waters and soft sand in and out of the water. This beach is great for enjoying the calm waters, cliff jumping, or even interacting with local pig residents that freely roam the beach. You can rent loungers and palapas here for about $20, there's plenty of parking, and there are even some food vendors in the parking lot. If Grote Nip is too busy and you prefer a more tranquil beach setting, continue along the way back to explore some of the quieter beaches. Though I can't speak for how busy these get during the day, in late afternoon when we visited, we almost had them all to ourselves. If at the end of your fabulous beach day you still have some energy left and a bit of sunlight, you may want to take a small detour to take in the sights of Santa Maria Bay. There's a lookout right on the side of the road 
and as you can see, the views are breathtaking. My nephew and niece were tired from a full day of beach fun, but they still gave it their thumbs up. If you are looking for more beach time, or prefer beaches closer to Willemstad, there are a few to choose from. On the west side, I'd consider Kokomo Beach, which has a vibing beach bar where you can get delicious drinks and smoothies. If you are on the east side of Willemstad and you like beaches with lots of amenities, visit the Jan Thiel Beach. You will have to pay an entry fee of a few dollars per person, but inside you can find ample parking and have access to beach chairs, restaurants and shops. This beach can get quite busy, but it's great for kids and is good for swimming and snorkeling. We even managed to explore a shipwreck and see an octopus chilling on the sea floor. If you prefer a more low-key vibe, head to the nearby Caracas Bay Beach. This is where the locals seem to hang. You can park literally steps from the beach, there's a good restaurant there, and the beach is great for swimming and snorkeling. The last beach I will mention is Tugboat Beach. With its rocky entry into the water, it is not a great beach for swimming or small children, but is excellent for snorkeling. Here you can find large schools of small fish and groups of young barracuda snacking on them, as if it were an endless dinner buffet. And, true to its name, this beach also features a sunken tugboat that presents amazing snorkeling experiences. A trip to Curaçao would not be complete without visiting Willemstad. In fact, I would recommend seeing the city during the day as well as at night. During the day, you get a welcoming feel and get a chance to explore the markets, shops and take in some of the colorful charm of the city. You may even hear stories from locals about history of Curaçao, including the iconic statues of wet nurses. And, if you are there at the right time, you may see the Queen Emma Bridge in action as it swings open to let boats in and out of the bay. The cool part is that you can actually stay on the bridge as it swings open. At night, parts of the city seem to come alive as bars, clubs and patios fill up with tourists and locals to enjoy some live music, food, drinks, and lively conversations. Here's just a small sample of what we encountered at multiple locations. Once you get past the lively nightlife scene, make sure to see the beautiful lights of the Queen Emma Bridge and its surroundings. Walking to the middle of the bridge will present you with great photo taking opportunities. The island of Curaçao has a distinctly European or Dutch feel, but nowhere do you see it more than when buying groceries. Depending on the supermarket you visit, you may find many Dutch products with no English description. My favorite supermarket was the one in Jan Thiel, which carried a great assortment of delicious European style buns and pastries. And with the exception of milk products, we didn't find groceries more expensive than what you would pay in the USA or Canada, and certainly a lot cheaper than Aruba. And if you can venture into Willemstad, you can enjoy local farmers markets and souvenir markets where prices are quite reasonable as well. Whether you choose to eat street food from local vendors or enjoy more upscale dining, there are plenty of tasty options to choose from in and around Willemstad. But don't take my word for it. Let's see what my niece has to say about it. We just got um, a meal, and this is what it looks like. It's actually really good. We just, this is the chicken. We finished it, and I'm eating the noodles now. It's so good, and it's definitely five star. Well, there you have it. Super high praise from my niece. If you are looking for a good steakhouse with a nice view, then El Gaucho will be a great choice. It is a little hard to find, even with Google Maps, but if you like a good slab of meat, it is worth it. 
It has a welcoming atmosphere with an open concept feel and great views of the area. We ordered a number of different steak and burger dishes and enjoyed them all. Another place that is uniquely Curaçao and a must visit is a restaurant called The Visarage. Located right at the edge of a bay, it serves locally caught fresh fish. When you line up to order, you get to see and choose each cut of fresh fish meat that you'd like to eat and can give instructions on how you'd like it cooked. The cuts of meat are then given to the cooks who in a few short minutes prepare your delicious meal. Overall, this place has a lively atmosphere and the prices are very reasonable. And if you are staying near Jan Thiel or are visiting the local beaches there, you should definitely try Brisa du Mar, which even has live music playing in the evening sometimes. <laughs> Curaçao offers many fun activities, in and out of the water. If you enjoy being up close with marine life without getting into the water, then visiting the Curaçao Sea Aquarium may be fun. There you can see dolphins, sharks and other fish, as well as flamingos. Be sure to time your visit with the daily dolphin show, as well as the flamingo feeding. And outside of the designated show times, you can view the exhibits and animals there, as well as go into an underwater sea observatory. Now you'll likely need only about three hours of time for the aquarium, so you can plan to pair it with another activity during your day. And now onto something more active. If you have ever wanted to try windsurfing, or have kids that are at least eight years old, Surf Spot Curaçao is possibly the best place on earth to do it. Located in the bay on the opposite side of Caracas Bay Beach, it has easy access into the water and lets you practice the craft in flat water with a good amount of wind. The guys who run this place are amazing. They give windsurfing and wingfoiling lessons and also allow you to rent the equipment. The best part is that they have windsurfing equipment of all sizes and can accommodate even small kids like my niece and all lessons and rentals include boat recovery in case you struggle or can't get back upwind. Within a couple of hours, the kids were riding on their own, downwind and upwind. For those of you who are like us and want more thrills, you can try your luck wing foiling. And if you were wondering, no, the guys riding here and jumping here are definitely not us. We did manage to get onto the board and start riding a bit, as you can see in this first person view of our ride. We had a blast and had many epic fails as we tried to rise up onto the foil. Another thrilling activity you can do in Curaçao is kite surfing. There's a decent spot on the northeast end of the island, past the Curaçao ostrich farm in the St. Joris Bay. There you will find Nick's kiting school. Since the school is located in a large bay, there is shallow flat water for easy entry and learning. The wind conditions vary, but we were able to get out on a 12 meter kite most days during our stay. The scenery there isn't overwhelmingly beautiful, but there are no beachgoers around and you don't have to worry about dodging any swimmers there. Of course you can bring your own gear, rent from the kite school, or take lessons with one of their instructors. Here I am, riding the calm water of the bay, while enjoying the beautiful sunny day. I don't think Curaçao is well known for surfing. If you want to surf in the Caribbean, you're much better off in places like northern coast of Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico. But if you insist on surfing in Curaçao, there is one marginal spot where it can be done. Since my nephew is really into surfing, we gave it a shot. It is located on the north coast in Playa Canoa and is a bit of a drive. The entry into the water is from a small beach on the side and the surfing area has some hazards. I would recommend that you speak with the windsurfing or kitesurfing guys who can hook you up with the local surfing pro who rents boards, gives lessons and guides you in the water. 
And now, some final thoughts and helpful tips for your journey. Curaçao as an island is an amazing travel destination. Throughout the trip, we never felt unsafe anywhere, we were welcomed by friendly locals everywhere, and were able to communicate fully in English. The island seems to always have windier conditions, which helps reduce pesky mosquitoes and is ideal for windsurfing and kitesurfing. Unlike in many Caribbean islands, Curaçao's tap water tastes great and is safe to drink, so bring an insulated drinking bottle and you won't have to buy any bottled water. The electrical plugs are the same as in North America, though there are some older houses that still use the old European plugs, so if this is a concern, you may want to bring the appropriate adapter, just in case. And as for currency, you can pay everywhere with US dollars, though I would bring smaller bills, including fives and tens. Oh, and best of all, Curaçao lies outside of the summer hurricane zone and does not experience the sargassum seaweed problem that other parts of the Caribbean have, leaving its beaches clean and beautiful. This is my first travel video. I hope you found it informative. I tried to show you everything that I like to see before I visit a place. Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and let me know in the comments what you liked and what you thought would be great to add in future videos. Thank you.